I'm Wayne Martin Belger. Um, this is my studio right behind me. And uh, welcome to Medium Photo uh, Studio Tours, Coronavirus Edition. Come on. Come on inside. This is Oakland. Studio dog, watchdog, does it all. So this is my studio and my girlfriend Alana's studio. Alana Eritam, she's also, she's a badass photographer who I love a lot. Um, this is our studio where we shoot. We like it to be really kind of cushy and comfy. So we got extra little like lounge areas, other little lounge areas. And then our flat files because we like to incorporate a lot of our work with, um, with our living. Um, I'm a photo based, um, pretty much museum installation artist. So I make cameras that are functional cameras that are designed to shoot one subject and focus on one subject. And I'll actually create the camera itself out of artifacts from that subject. Uh, to give you an idea, I have in the other room, this is our bedroom and also in the front of the studio. This is uh, one of my latest projects, I actually just showed in San Diego at uh, San Diego Art Institute. It's called Us and Them. It's a uh, study of the fictitious us and them that governments or the powerful create to dehumanize one group of people. The uh, camera itself is mounted in the middle. These uh, actually panels are going on the side. These are made out of the US-Mexico border wall. And then there's different artifacts in the camera. The original camera was stolen in Mexico City while I was uh, um, photographing a migrant caravan. And then this door is part of the installation that was a um, part of the UN's fingerprinting door. Uh, when refugees would come to Lesbos, Greece, they would be fingerprinted by the UN and then they got an EU visa and they would wipe off their fingerprints on the door. So I thought it'd be great for the installation. And then with this project, I photograph uh, people that are, that are put into that us and them category. Like the woman over here um, is an Afghan refugee. And uh, this was, I took this photo in the food tent in Moria refugee camp in Lesbos, Greece. The photo on the other side, this is um, a Zapatista couple in a Zapatista rebel compound in Chiapas, Mexico. Um, I love working with the Zapatistas. I've got to know them quite well. This is another part of our studio. This is mainly where my girlfriend Alana works, um, even though I got two prints in here, but this is her work area. This, um, another Zapatista photo. And then this one over to the right was from Standing Rock. Um, like I said, I'm a photo-based installation artist. I make all the cameras myself out of um, aluminum, titanium, and all different types of alloys. So I will now take you into the machine shop. Um, also have a lot of other my toys. I'm heavily into motorcycles, so I kind of have a couple motorcycles. But also I have all my gear for camping, backpacking, mountaineering, um, everything I need to hit the road really kind of fast. Like if there's some photo shoot that was coming up that I needed to grab and go, everything I need is right there. Shipping departments over here, a lot of crates um, to ship some, uh, the work all over the world for exhibition. And then this is my desk, which it might look really kind of unorganized, but I know where everything is. And a lot of the stuff or on the desk is here for inspiration or just kind of, I mean, I've had things for like 30 years and all of a sudden I go, ooh, this little bolt will be perfect. And then, um, it ends up in a camera project or installation. Let me show you a couple of the cameras. Okay, so a couple cameras I've been working on. Um, this one has been a project for quite a few years. Uh, every single piece of metal on here, I machined uh, myself. They, you know, I bought it as like just blocks of aluminum, titanium, different alloys. And then I machined it on my mills and lathes, which I'll show you in a second. This one, Cam this camera is designed to study the mythology of creation and destruction by using subatomic particles, which are the essence of creation and destruction. And it's designed to be used in a particle accelerator. And the, um, 
The aperture and the way the camera's set up, it's made to just use gamma radiation and um, X-ray radiation to make a photograph. How it works is you pump it up with air, right down here, there's a little air valve. And then there's three big air tanks that hold all the air. This would be in the closed position, and there's going to be these um, these lead glass um, boxes that kind of go around the outside, so it's not totally complete yet. But you hit the switch on the side to open up the camera, and then the whole camera opens up. You slide 8x10 x-ray film down in the middle, hit this little switch down here again, and the whole thing closes. Uh, because it's to study mythology of creation and destruction, I have the Lord God Shiva right here in the back. Shiva is the god of creation and destruction, and Shiva is standing on Trinitite, which is glass formed from the very first nuclear detonation in 1945 in Los Alamos. And it still gives off a little bit of beta, gamma, and alpha radiation from the uh, plutonium that was used in the first nuke ever. The latest project, this is what I've been working every day on because I have photo shoots lined up for it. It's actually a top secret project. Can't even tell you what it's about, but uh, this is where we're at so far. This is gonna be the back plate to push the four by five film forward. It actually goes on this camera right back here, but there's gonna be a lot more machine work done to it. The aperture plate is right here, and then this is actually a gun trigger. This opens up, and there's the aperture in there. The, uh, and there's just a lot of really interesting artifacts in the camera. The, the brass work that's all done it is going to be from this. This was part of a 105 millimeter shell casing that um, was used in Afghanistan. It was one of the very first shots fired in the Afghan war. And um, can't tell much about this project. I'm actually growing a beard for this project even. But it's um, it'll come out in um, around August. So now I will show you where I make um, these fun little parts. So this is my lathe. This is um, a tool that I use to make round parts. So um, put it on. Comes in with a cutting tool. Nice clean cut there. And then to face it to make it look nice and shiny. That's the lathe. So this is my mill. This is what I make uh, pretty much all my square parts, but also other little funky parts, really precision parts. This uh, readout actually goes down to a hundred thousandths of an inch. So I could get get all my cuts really, really accurate and really close because it's good to have a light type camera. This works by this cutting tool here coming down. And then comes in. And cuts off a lot of the metal to whatever shape you want. The uh, wheels can come in, give you all kinds of different designs. That's how the mill works. And then when I want to uh, work on the photos, take you into the dark room. Oh, also this is a uh, this is another area at the back of the studio. This is where I hide a lot of my interesting things. 
Um, like this is full of bones. Another bone. This whole box is nothing but wish bones in here. So the whole thing is wish bones. People's teeth. Don't know why you need teeth. There's also lots of dentures and lots of other metal parts, all kinds of things to make other things. This box has about 90 crucifixes. So, yeah. Let's go into the dark room. Come on in. This is really kind of hokey, but fine. <laughs> so, uh, this is my dark room. This is, I got a couple Besslers um, that are my workhorses for my darkroom. This one, if I'm doing really fine printing, I dig. Um, it uh, just has a lot of different options for kitchen head and, and doing different things. This is the one I use for my really, really big prints, my 48 by 60. What I did is I even made an easel up here on the wall. This easel, is 48 by 60 inches. It has axes at the top. So the whole thing needs to come down to be able to put paper in it. And then when it's down uh, in the dark, I will put down nine sheets of uh, gel and silver paper, tape them down, put a piece of foam core on the back, tape that to the edges so it doesn't move. And then when it's ready to shoot, this goes up. And then I'll expose the paper with the negative that I shot with a camera that I made and uh, then go over to here. This is my sink where I usually have three to four different trays set up with just different types of developer so that each of the photos will have its own tonal quality or each of the nine sheets of uh, gel and silver paper will have its own tonal quality. And I'll develop them at different rates because I like to have a little bit of contrast within the different sheets. And then fix them, get them ready, print washer, and that is my dark room. Uh, this is another one of the 16 by 20 prints I did for the us and them project. Uh, this is actually a, a commander, a Zapatista commander. And it was a pretty amazing uh, experience having um, have hundreds and hundreds of soldiers on the side of the road and taking a picture of him with a camera that I made in the middle of a Zapatista rebel compound in the jungles of Chiapas. It's, uh, and this is why I love what I do, is actually being able to go out, connect with people, be with people that I would have never met otherwise. And the cameras I make, they feel connected to the people I photograph. And so I get invited into a lot of situations like this. And it's been, it's been a pretty amazing experience. It's, it's, you build these relationships and a lot of the studio is covered in different things that, um, different things that were gifted to me by people that uh, I built a relationship with. Like these big banners over here. These were from um, two big Zapatista events that happened in Chiapas. This is when uh, Mari Chubia is running for the presidency of Mexico and she was backed by the Zapatistas. And they gave me the banner from the actual event and then over to the right here is another huge banner of the 35th anniversary of the Zapatista movement of when they came down from the mountains of Chiapas and took over southern Mexico. And that's a really happy dog. <laughs> and some other um, work too. That also, I've gotten to be a bit of an art collector too, which has been kind of cool. Um, Les Crims, I've gotten to know him. He's, he digs my work. This is a Les Crims print. This is actually a really famous Les Crims print that has been uh, all over the world. 
One of my favorite painters, Sean Barber, painted, did this painting, and this is actually a, a painting of me getting that tattoo. And then we have Alana's mom, a portrait of her, and she's not sure who took the portrait, but she worked for Time Life magazine, and it was one of their photographers. And this is a, um, it's kind of hard to see, but this is a, um, a Ouija, um, Arthur Felig. And up above here is one of my favorite artists, Alana Aritan. This was another one of the prints. The prints I make, it's gelled in silver paper, but there's five gallons of acrylic resin poured over the top. The print also, every print I do for the s and series has um, handwritten script by the person I photographed. So this was photographed in the Palestinian territories in the West Bank. And this is a beautiful poem he wrote in Arabic. And what I do is I scan the, uh, the actual paper and then I make um, a large vinyl um, die cut sticker. So I pour two gallons of acrylic resin and then put the sticker on over the two gallons after it hardens and then put another gallon over the top of that. So thank you for uh, joining me on the studio visit. And uh, I want to thank Medium San Diego. It was probably one of the best, most professional um, lectures I ever did. It's a great event. If you haven't been to Medium before, please go. Scott kicks ass putting that thing together and it's a pretty incredible event. So thank you, stay safe, don't touch anybody, and have a wonderful, wonderful.